watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today I'm going to run through a very quick tutorial about how you can set up a dynamic sun slider to control the time of day and the position of the sun in your model on the fly. So the idea for this script came to me when I was looking at SketchUp actually. So for anyone that's used this program before you might remember that there's these slider bars which give you dynamic control over shadows from a time of day and a date perspective. So I thought how can this be achieved in Revit? ultimately, because anyone that's used Revit before will understand the sun settings are a little bit harder to edit than in SketchUp. So there's a few ways to change sun settings. The most common way I see people use is by going to sun settings and going to still and manually typing in their time of day, which obviously takes quite a lot of time every time you want to update that, um, which could be quite important when you're just doing a design review. The second way you can do it is by turning on your sun path, selecting the sun or the sun wheel, and basically adjusting the position of the sun or the position of the month. This can be quite confusing for a more basic user to interface. And as you can see, the shadows aren't actually dynamically updating as I move this around. They only update once I finish moving, which isn't really suitable for a dynamic review. So what I'm gonna do instead is look at Dynamo. And when I first started looking into the script, I was a little bit disappointed to find that there weren't a lot of settings available to interact with the time of day and the solar settings in terms of setting the sun settings to a view. So I actually went hunting for solutions online and came across a, a great solution that another person sort of developed. So I thought I'd cross-reference theirs first. So there's a, there's a website called DTX Dynamo Library. Um, it's actually a public Trello page uh, managed by a few people at Acom. So I thought I'd just give them a bit of a shout out, given that I've used one of their scripts or part of one of their scripts. So there's a whole bunch of great scripts in this library. I highly recommend you have a look. Um, they do have like an etiquette section of their Trello board about how you need to conduct yourself while you're there. So don't come there and start ruining everything for them. But um, it's a great resource and they've got some good tutorials as well. So there was a post I found called Slider Sun Settings, which had a Dynamo script attached to it, which had some Python in it which enabled me to access the sun settings by inserting this into my version of the script. So my first version of the script, which I'll show you, is basically set so it can be run on automatic mode. So when Dynamo is in automatic mode, um, basically it will keep rerunning itself every time anything changes in the state of your script. Um, so every time a slider bar will change, uh, so will the settings. So the only thing I was just gonna show you first is just the build of Dynamo that I'm using just so you can follow along at home and potentially build your script similarly as well. So this is my core at the moment, which is the latest. I don't believe this package uses any custom nodes. However, it does use a bit of Python script to access the Revit API in order to set the sun settings of the view. It's a relatively simple Python script, um, but it was a part of the API that I wasn't familiar with. So it really helps me by having access to it. And the copyright is just there for the people that built the Python itself and the idea that the script was derived from. So the way the script works is that the, there's a shadow intensity for how dark your shadows are. And you can see as I click and drag that, it's actually dynamically updating those settings. You can change the year, um, which won't really have a large impact on what happens. Some years have more days in them, but that's the only real impact it has. You can also change the month of the year, and then you can change the day as well. And the one where you really see the dynamic settings come into play is when you can slide the time. And you can see that that is quite dynamic and responding quite quickly because it's quite a simple model. If you're working in a more heavy model, you may prefer to run in, automa in manual mode, get the times of day that you need, and then run instead, just so that you don't uh, slow down your model too much and potentially freeze up your session by overloading your graphics card, for example. So that's a very basic version of how this script can work. It pushes all these settings into a node called date time by date and time which establishes basically a time of year with the day and, and the year, uh, and also the hours, um, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. You can go quite quite detailed with this node. However, for this case, we've just locked those down to zero. And there's also a watch node that shows you which specific day of the year you're working with. So I've just got a cat standing on my escape key. <laughs> there we go. Um, and these will get pumped into this Python script in order to establish their settings in the solar settings. However, when I looked at this script, I realized there was a few differences between this and SketchUp. One thing I like about SketchUp's version is that there's a day, a day slider that covers the entirety of the year, which is much more dynamic. So it really reduces the number of controls that you need in order to achieve these settings. 
Um, it also doesn't factor in daylight savings time, which is quite important. Uh, for those that are aware, Revit does have a daylight savings setting, which will basically offset all your time by an hour. The problem with this is that it actually offsets it no matter what time of year you're in. It just assumes that you know you're working at a time where daylight savings is relevant which isn't really that suitable. So I wanted to build this into the script as well. So I've actually improved this script as well. I had to be quite mindful how I improved it because if I want to run this in automatic mode, it can't be too heavy. So everything I do has to be efficient and relative, re relatively to the point. So there's still, still sections of the script that are relatively intact, such as getting the solar settings of the view, pushing everything back into the Python script at the end, and also getting the date time node at the end there with all those fields being fed in. Aside from that, some of the main differences you'll notice is that now we have a day of year instead of month and day. See, so this is a 1 through to 366. And as I drag that, you'll see it's figuring out what day of year we're at. So it's doing the year by the month and the day, which is a little bit easier and much more similar to SketchUp. There's also a daylight savings time offset control. And more or less, I'm just making the general assumption that if I'm outside my third quarter of the year or within my first quarter and I'm using an OR node to check whether that condition is larger than this or if 90 is larger than that condition. So you can see that there's a there's another IF node that I'm using there. So if I search for logic IF, you'll see that it's coming from a package called Zebra. So there used to be an IF node um, that doesn't actually seem to work anymore. However, Zebra, which is a custom package, does have an if node that still works. So I recommend downloading that if you need this node. Um, from there, basically, I just check whether either of those conditions is true. And I feed this into a formula that either adds zero if it's false, or it adds the daylight saving correction if it's true. So you can say, don't worry about daylight savings, but you can also say plus one or minus one, just in case we turn our clocks the other way for some reason. Other than that, that's the main change there. The way that I'm doing the day of the year is a little bit more complicated. So I'm taking a node called date time days in month. And depending on the year, this node basically will tell you how many days are in a specific month. But what I'm doing is mapping a range to this to this area. So I'm saying one through to 12 on an increment of one to get the 12 months of the year. So some days of the years, obviously there'll be leap years and sometimes you may have different number of days. So that's why this is here. From there, I'm basically doing a list of repeated item, and I'm repeating basically this range, so whichever one occurs between 1 and 12 at 1, by the number of times that there are days in the year. So basically this is a list saying what month is it on each particular day. And from there, I flatten both lists, so they both end up at 365 at the moment. Basically one of them represents the day of the year, or the day of the month, sorry. The other one represents the month of the year on that day. And then from there, I just feed in get item at index from my day of the year. And that effectively gives me a number for the month and a number for the day, which I can then feed into this graph. And ultimately, that gives me quite a powerful tool that I can use for fairly lightweight uh, conceptual modeling at an early stage, where I can really quickly just dynamically check the influence of the sun on various times of the year, so I can turn on daylight savings. If you use daylight savings correction in this way, just be mindful that this day down, this time down here won't actually be true and correct anymore because we're basically offsetting the time. So this will reflect basically an uncorrected time in principle. So we would be an hour forward in the script, but not in the time in the model. So just something to be aware of. But if we weren't correcting daylight savings time, the time would be true and correct. So you'll notice these two are set to watch basically. And this basically tells me whether daylight savings is active and also the date and the time as I change things. And you'll see that they'll dynamically update. There you go, nice and easy. I'll add a link to, um, actually I probably won't. I'll just show that page again for those scripts from ACOM, just so you've got that reference available. But I might not put the link just so that they don't get any traffic to their board that they might not want through um, ads, for example. However, um, it's just a Trello board called DTX Dynamo Library. I'm sure they're quite happy to have a little bit of exposure. Um, and they basically advertise themselves as a place to build, share, and seek help. So it's a great resource, and I'm definitely going to get more active there with them, I think. Um, otherwise, that's the tutorial for today. Uh, hopefully, this will actually be a tool that you can build yourself and make use of. The hardest part of the tool really is the Python scripts, which is already done. 
So from there, it's just understanding how to structure a date time in order to push it through to the model as well. So uh, thanks for watching today. And uh, if you've got any comments or any recommendations for other tutorials that you'd like, me, like to see me do, just let me know. And if you'd like to um, see more, uh, feel free to follow and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next session. Thanks.